let's go for a ride! You are watching Cycle Cruises all on one motorcycle channel. Subscribe today! And you have the audacity to put my ass on the auction block like a two dollar hoe. God damn it, don't you ever! You know, getting rid of your motorcycles like breaking up with your girlfriend. Yeah, it's tough at first, it's sad, but then you gotta look forward to the next girl that you meet, that you're gonna have a good time with, new adventures, intimacy. Oh yeah, the intimacy. Well, it's the same way with a motorcycle. Same exact way. A motorcycle is like a woman in so many ways. And guess what? I got a new motorcycle, baby. And guess what it is? Is she the KTM 690 Endura R? Or perhaps the Honda CRF 250L? No, wait a minute. What about the WR 250R? Or the DRZ 400? No, maybe I got the little TW 200. Or maybe the Honda 650? Or maybe it's the WR450F that I turn street legal. Or maybe the Kawasaki KLX 250. Or maybe the Kawasaki 650. A new leftover 2014 Yamaha WR250R, baby. So now you can't say Psycho Cruiser's a Honda fanboy anymore because he's got a Yamaha. He's part of the Yamaha family now. WR250R. Sounds much better than CRF250L. I don't know. Just doesn't have a ring to it like WR250R. <laughs> yeah, baby. Okay, on a serious tip, I'm going to tell you why I chose this bike over all the other bikes. But first off, let's cut on the dash and show you how many miles are on the clock. Show you it's a new bike. It's got three miles on the clock. And this was a leftover 2014 model, a uh, new model that was on the showroom floor. And I only paid $6,500 cash. As you guys know, Psycho Cruiser does not finance cars, motorcycles, or anything else. He owns all his shit, and if he can't pay cash... He can't afford it, but thank God everybody doesn't do that because banks will go out of business and this economy would be a shithole. So I'm grateful for you debt slaves that do finance. But anyways, uh, let me sit on the bike here and show you how uh, I actually flat foot this bike. You know, compared to the uh, KTM 690 Endura R, which I almost flat foot that bike, but this bike is actually not even as tall as the KTM 690. I know a lot of you guys were bitching about how tall this bike is. This bike isn't all that tall, man. At least for me, I'm six foot. You know, I, some of you guys are like over six foot complaining about how tall this bike is. This bike isn't all that tall, man. But anyways, I chose this over the uh, KTM 690 uh, Endura R because as you guys know, you know, I'm not dealing with just uh, one dealership that, you know, they go on vacation half the year. It's only one guy working on the uh, the bikes. Uh, like I said, it was going to take a week or more just to get a new bike prepped. You know, I'm trying to get out of here in my bug out vehicle before the summer's over. I'm not trying to be waiting for a motorcycle. And also, man, I'm new to dirt. You know, I don't need a freaking fast bike on dirt. And by the way, this is bike is definitely going to be for the trails, back roads. It's not going to be on the street all that much, which I'll do some test rides and review videos and shit out on the roads. But you know, my street bike is the CBR 1000 double R. You know, even that KTM 690 is not going to feel as fast as my CBR 1000 double R, even though that KTM 690 is a badass bike and fast. But I didn't want a street bike. As you guys know, I want a bug out bike to go with my van and take some trips in the woods and shit. And this bike will do it. But I tell you guys, I took this bike out on the streets. Yes, it is slow as shit. It's slow as a turd floating in water. But you can do wheelies on this bike. 
And when you take it on the off-road, it's more than adequate out on the trails, at least at my skill level. When I took it out in that backfield you see there, riding up around the hills and shit like that, thank God that I got a 250, man, because I tell you, I don't need anything faster. I got some learning to do out there on the dirt. And I want to be able to beat up on the bike and not have to worry about taking it to a dealership and waiting a month to get it back. You know what I'm saying? And also, a lot of the work I can do on this bike, I can get parts cheap for this bike. Tons of dealer support for uh, Japanese bikes. But anyways, the reason why I chose this bike over the CRF 250L is because actually I felt the reliability isn't all that great with the Honda CRF 250L. It's it's not bad, don't get me wrong, but some people have complained about engine problems. Uh, they did a recall uh, recently on some wire connections or something like that. They're working out the bugs on that bike. I mean, it's a fairly new bike. It came out, what, in 2013? So it's only been out a couple of years, and so they're working the bugs out, you know. As where this WR250R has been out since, like, what, uh, 2008. So they've worked all the bugs out on this bike. And also, this bike has supposedly better suspension. It's, it has adjustable suspension compared to the CRF250L, which, you know, you can't adjust the suspension on that bike. This bike has higher top-end power. You can rev. This bike is a, a bike that you, you rev the shit out of. You rev the piss out of. And I love that. That's what I love about little bikes. Because you can rev the shit out of it. And you're not in the felony zone like my CBR 1000 RR. You can bust wheelies on this bike. You can beat it up. Drop it. Pick it back up. Get on the bike. That's what's awesome about dirt bikes and dual sports. And, uh, and, and what's great about Japanese bikes is they're very reliable. ton of dealer support. A lot of aftermarket parts available for this bike uh, and OEM parts. So, you know, it was just a wise choice to go with the 250. You know, I'm not ready at the skill level I'm at on the dirt. I'm not ready for a faster bike. You know, as far as a WR450R, I had thought about, you know, getting that bike and turning it into a, a street bike. Uh, but, you know, a lot of some people were saying it really doesn't make that great of a dual sport. You know, it's really strictly out you know, for the dirt, and uh, some people argue on that, but really, I'm not ready for a 450, man, 450 is too much for me out on the dirt, you know, like I said, I'm new, and uh, like I said, I, you know, I'm, I'm working my way up, you know, I gotta earn my way up, you know what I'm saying, so in the future, I may get a 450 or a 690, but right now, I'm gonna work it out on a 250, and guess what, it fits in my bug out van real nice, and I'm getting ready to show you right now. As you can see, the bike fits perfect in the van. And another great aspect to this bike is I don't have to turn it on to load it in the van. All I have to do is just uh, walk it up the ramp. It only weighs 298 pounds. Also, I have it set up uh, permanently in this position. I don't have to move it around in the van anymore. I'm not using a wheel chalk. I'm using the front console of the van as a wheel stopper. And I have it strapped down on both sides. I have a D-ring at the passenger seat bolt and a D-ring at the driver seat bolt. And it's strapped down 100% solid. I have uh, the rear tire strapped down. So let's do a little test drive with this setup. All right. As you can see there, bike's riding real nice in the van. Shotgun, baby. Time to bug out. Hey, if you want to keep up with my bug out van build series, go to my website at cyclecruiser.com and click on my videos. And I have a playlist there titled Bug Out Van Videos. <laughs> Welcome to Psycho Cruises Click the Go links. Just click on the pictures below to go to my recommended videos and my social media sites. Also, don't forget to visit my blog and store at psychocruiser.com. If you have any trouble clicking on these links, they are also provided in the info section of this video. Thank you and subscribe today. Check out my new channel where I talk about anything and everything, not just motorcycle related. Psycho Cruiser Motor Vlog.